Hey, what's up guys? I'm Billy Rohan. We're back again with the second edition of VHS Days. Uh, last time we got to check out some old favorites. We just got back from Happy New Year's. I hope you guys had a happy new year. And today we're going to check out some old favorites. It's just one of those things, like when you watch VHSs, you remember like skating was so different back then. And not everybody was super amazing on a skateboard from all the parks. But when you saw something new in a video, you were just blown away by it. And when you watch some of these VHSs now, you realize these dudes were that amazing 20 years ago. All right, so today we got the old New York mixtape from 1998. It's a cult classic, probably one of the best East Coast videos around. Uh, this was in 1998 they put this out. That was back when New York City had Supreme and Zoo. It was like Girl and Chocolate in the East Coast. But well, we're going to check out the Harold Hunter part right now. Living legend. Rest in peace. Yeah, this part was dope. This was Harold Hunter at his finest. There was a time when people forget but Harold was like, he was like the black Bruce Lee of skateboarding. Back in the 90s, there was a time when Harold was doing modeling for Tommy Hilfiger when he was acting in the movie Kids. And this dude really was the king of New York back then. Nobody could touch him. You know, people talk about the Wu-Tang Clan and all this stuff. This dude actually had Ghostface and Method Man rapping to his whole kit. It was pretty unbelievable when you see it. You know, people, people forget that like, Back then, this was the dude that was pushing skateboarding in New York harder than anybody else. And he was an athlete. Like, Harold Hunter, when you came to New York and you got to skate with him at Union Square or any of these places, it was like, yo, that dude's ill. It wasn't just about some sort of personality or any of that stuff. I remember one time, we were at Tompkins Square Park, and Mike Wright goes, yo, son, your 15 minutes of fame are up. Just give it up. And Harold looked at him and he's like, yo, you never even went flow. At least I went pro. And it was like just one of those moments where you remember that Harold had this quick wit about him. Like as smart as Jeff Pang is, nobody could ever battle him. Harold was the only one that was so smart that he could just bust on anybody. And the way he skated was very similar. You go to a spot and he would just think of something to do on the spot. It wasn't like he had to plan it out. That was just the kind of kid he was. I think a lot of that came from just growing up where he was, in compost, traveling around the whole world from his skateboarding abilities. I remember him telling me a story about how Rosario Dawson was his first girlfriend. And I was just thinking like, damn, if I ever woke up in the morning and I looked like a pug dog, how the hell would I survive? You know, and this dude went through the world straight up, looked like a pug in real life, and just was so lovable and nice to people that his ability on a skateboard and his charm and charisma and personality took him all over the world. This dude went to Switzerland, Japan, anywhere you can think of, and then came back to Manhattan. I remember he had this uh, little saying he would say to girls, you know, he just, any girl, didn't matter if she was ugly or pretty, he'd go, yo, God bless you, ma. I love you. And you got all these dudes now, they try to holler at girls and they don't have any game. But he would just say one sentence and that was it. And I'd, I'd never seen anybody knock girls like that. Harold was like a black knock Cadillac. Like when he wanted to make something happen, if he imagined it, it would happen. It didn't matter what it was. And it was fun, man, when we'd roll around. Sometimes we'd go to clubs, skate, hang out at Union Square, and then you'd go hit up the clubs and the dudes, even the bouncers, would warn them. They'd be like, Harold, don't smoke weed tonight or we're going to kick you out. We're going to be watching you. One of my first times going with them, we went with Amy Gunter to this big club. And uh, I think it was called um, Lit or something like that. It was one of those clubs. The, the bouncers warned us, and next thing you know, people are smoking blunts, passing it around. And then I go to hit it, Harold hits it. And next thing you know, the bouncers rushed up on us. They kicked Harold out. And I didn't know anybody there, so when they went to kick me out, I just threw some Shaolin Kung Fu move on him and broke the dude's thumb. And I'd never seen a big black bear of a man fall so quickly. And then the rest of the dudes came and threw me in the back room, and I got out of it, talked my way out of it. But I ended up out front looking for Harold the rest of the night. 
ran into Todd Jordan. Todd Jordan took me to some girl's house, and he had a threesome with two hot chicks while I almost threw up on the couch because I drank too much. But that was the kind of Manhattan it was back then. You know, this was a crazy world. It's still like that, but everybody's on their phones and stuff like that. And after Harold passed away, nobody could really fill that void. You know, it was like he was a mascot for Manhattan. He hated leaving Manhattan. He never liked to go to Brooklyn. You'd take him to Williamsburg and he'd be like, damn, yo, this is like a whites-only neighborhood. <laughs> Couldn't wait to get back into Manhattan. But yeah, Harold Hunter, rest in peace. Hey, so I hope you guys enjoyed volume two of VHS Days. Got to catch up on a little skateboarding history. Remind you that these dudes been doing this stuff for a long time before a lot of you kids were born out there and you're still doing it. It's like fine wine. You used to think it was over at 30, but now these guys are in their thirsty 30s and they're just doing what they do. So we'll see you on the next volume. Hope you enjoyed it. Peace. <laughs>